Hello everyone. I finished my cross stitch. I think it's called coming home. Uh, I might be mistaken. I will have to check later. I will uh, add an in description box the name of this cross stitch. And it's all finished. Like it's not all finished, but it's finished all stitches. Now all is left is to do all this back stitching in here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different colors of back stitching. So my plan is I want to show you this before how this looks like without back stitching. And I already snap shots, photos of uh, different corners of this canvas. So we can compare how this is going to look like uh, with the backstitch and without. And you will see how difference that makes. I think for now this looks really good. But doesn't have this little bit sharpness of the backstitching. So now I'm going to wash this and hopefully, finger crossed, all this painting around the canvas will be disappear. Uh, I did took a picture of this part so I don't have to go, well I still gonna be using my um, from canvas the booklet where it show me where back stitching will go because now you can really see it just a few lines in here visible that's it well, rest of the, under the stitches so I will have to use now my symbols um, piece of paper where back stitching is showing and uh, on the end uh, after I wash and back stitch uh, well after wash actually I can show you how much threads I have left or actually I can show you even now if you wish uh, here is what we have Lots of stitches left, but also we will use uh, lots of them for the back stitching. For example, number three and four and eight. So we have a three, four, and eight on this side. Sixteen, twenty-one. That's another side. We will need this blue. Sixteen, twenty-one. What's next? 23, 25, 28. And here it is 23, 25, and 28. It's a black. Lots of black. So this one I have, and then I have... Uh, here was my blends all left. And I have this left, number 15, that I don't need anymore. So I have lots of threads left because lots in here on this piece of paper that like uh, just I need like you know a few colors from here but the rest of it's all leftovers. So actually I will give you a good tip if you want to say lots of threads you can buy three I mean you can buy count a the 11 counts. And then if you can stitch on a 14 count image, but that would be like counted stitch of course, you can have lots of thread left over for your other projects maybe, because this one uh, you need to stitch in three threads. And to be honest, I don't really like to stitch with three threads. I would love to never stitch 11 Ada again, because 14 at least you stitch with two threads and the crosses will be more even uh, and some threads go more fluffy a little bit to the end than the other one for example this yellow color is not bad but then I have next to it this um, in here a little bit fluffing up threads especially when me working without frame uh, also, there's in some point threads maybe didn't lay down very flat, especially those blends, because it's difficult to create very smooth surface with three threads, because they need to be laid down flat very, very 
in a perfect uh, next to each other line so uh, I think from now on if I have to order for well actually I did already I ordered some right before from Aliexpress for example but I did not order any more in 11 count because um, I like to be um, stitches a little bit more neat and smaller and with two threads it's better to control your stitches than with three threads but after all this is look beautiful so now I'm gonna prepare everything to wash and we will wash together and I will show you uh, how we're going to do I will use instruction from this cross stitching which somehow that's how I was going to do anyway uh, but I, I was I was going to do like almost like in a cold water but it has to be warm and soapy so we will experiment together for those who are afraid that their you know threads could fade and change colors I don't know so we will see together if this is good or not and it's time to wash our cross stitch I couldn't find bigger dish or square bucket, I don't know. I'm just going to use one of my biggest bowls from kitchen that I'm using for cooking or mixing, whatever. And water in here, it's like, it's almost like cold, barely, barely warm. And I'm going to tell you, I have in here my thermometer candy, I mean candy thermometer. And I'm going to show you, it's supposed to... In instruction it says below 30 Celsius should be water and if you look in here it's like 40 is a first mark but you can see it's not touching 40 and it stays this way so it's around 30 it's like the water almost almost cold like barely barely warm now for this I will use detergent uh, dishwash and this is the best dishwash you can actually use and I would say this is green and green it's not because of the color it's green because it's safe for environment uh, what it says original fresh uh, green dishwashing liquid naturally okay 90 what is this what is it says um, so anyway, this is like the most safest this dish um, washing soap that don't have too much chemical. It's sa safe for your hands and everything if you are allergic. So this is the lightest um, and the most environment friendly dishwash soap. I got this one last year in my local store for roses. I mix this soap with water to spray my roses outside so bugs won't eat them. And I'm gonna use this one for my cross stitching. So I'm just gonna pour on my hand so we can see how much I will use. Um, like a handful, I don't know, just as much as can fit in my hand. And we will see if this is enough or not enough. Maybe I will add one more hot soapy water we can get. I don't know, maybe one more. Oh, less little bit. And hopefully, <laughs> my thread's not gonna fade. It's, it says detergent to put some soap in it. So I'm using as instruction says on the back of the pages. And now I will try to submerge. It's not gonna fit flat, of course, so I will have to kind of squish it as it's gonna go wet we will might gonna fold it in half and I will leave this for about 15 or 20 minutes I will come back and check I will uh, check my timer or well, my clock and we will come back and see how this gonna work how long it will stay before my water definitely oh my goodness if I can show you right now look how dirty water already so obviously ink started to dissolve already and hopefully my threads 
not gonna go fade together with them. Oh my goodness, I'm so scared. I'm so scared, I'm telling you. <laughs> but before you ruin your cross stitch, you better watch mine. So if I ruin, I'm gonna be like, oh well, okay, I try. <laughs> But you know, it's good thing to do on video, this experiment, because if threads would fade, I can definitely can dispute with the store. Oh my lord. Oh my lord. In here, instead of brown, now it's look like a green. So I'm terrifying, I guess. Oh well. Okay, I'm gonna leave this. Now I'm really, really scared, but I guess those blue lines start to dissolve and uh, I can see a little bit this number start to fade. I'm gonna leave this for maybe, let's say, 20, maybe 15 minutes. I can show you the water is disgustingly black, so the ink is dissolving fast. I'm just gonna do a few more things like this to so make sure it's everything um, absorbed. I might gonna even put a little bit more water in here and make sure it's the same temperature water just to, to make sure my... F or maybe I can fold it in half. Now I'm gonna make a mess but let me fold it in half and maybe will fit better. No, I'm not going to do this now, it's too late now. So let's just dip it down and I will come back to you in maybe 15-20 minutes. I'm going to let sit this till it needs to be rains and we will come back. But look at this, water is black. Like it's, it's very, very dirty. Alright, I'm going to wipe my hands right now and I'm just going to wait. I'm not gonna squish it, um, like you can gently squish it, but don't wash like you would wash your regular clothes. Just let this dissolve by itself in the water. And I will see if I will need to wash one more time in clean water to change again with the soap or will be ready just to rinse it. So I will back to you shortly. Well, here is what I'm thinking. It's one minute only gone, okay? And I think I will exchange water in here because, like, I just don't want to set my cross stitching in this dirty, dirty water. Uh, I still need to dissolve, like, this part of the canvas. Let me zoom a little bit more close. See, it's still in here, need to be dissolved. But when I look on those blue lines that was inside of my, trying to not to make my other hand wet so I can actually navigate my camera. But in here on the sky where was a gridded canvas, all those blue lines, I think uh, almost disappear 100%. I don't see them now. The only this fat writing on the edges left. So I'm going to change water and we'll make a fresh one so all this dirty water, you know, don't absorb again into my canvas and threads. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to rinse this one and submerge same way as I did uh, first time, this time. Um, I'm going to put same thing, uh, water with the two handful of soap and I will let sit longer. So let me come back with clean water in here because I don't really want to keep it longer in this mess. It's, it's, you know, all the ink gone now so it's dirty. I'm back with clean water and I just put back in here just kind of like a hold it under the sink uh, in the same warm water just to rinse out the dirty water as you can see still soap left. But I'm already surprised how fast that was. I thought I will need to wait like maybe for, you know, 20, 30 minutes. But surprisingly, the ink gone really, really fast. Almost left like those edges. If I can show you now, 
like barely you can see it a little bit left so I'm gonna put fresh soap in here maybe even one hand would be enough a handful and I'm not squishing I'm just like just a pushing I, I don't want any squishing I don't want to disturb my squares because I still have to do my back stitching after this so I want this canvas not to be pulled or stretched or squished those squares all I do is just you know pattern like this to merge under the water so so far I'm really liking it the corner then I was terrifying seeing a green now it's beautiful uh, color of the thread that's supposed to be I can see very very lightly uh, let me try to zoom in my hand with it. I don't want to touch camera with that hand. Hold on, just wipe up my pants. Okay, let's see. See, there's just a little bit left riding, like all over on the canvas, just a tiny, tiny bit left. And here was like fat ink. And a sky in here, it's gone. Those tiny blue lines gone fast. That's what the water was so green and dirty. Look how I don't think you can see any lines in here. So they do dissolve in the water really nicely. Okay, let's see here on the bottom. All those colors gone. So good thing I took picture. Obviously I do have well here a little bit more left. My backstitching colors was here, but I took picture, so I'm not gonna go and use my paper. So I'm gonna submerge this down because the most that need to be dissolved. And now I'll leave this one till all the ink is gone. And then I show you my next, uh, next what I do when I pull out after water. So far I'm happy. So if you have a cross stitching with the ink printed on it, I don't think you should worry about. Just make sure your water is barely, barely warm, not hot because you don't know how the threads will react <coughs> if your water are too hot. So always like barely warm water will be good. And now I'm just gonna let set this till all the uh, ink is gone and I will see uh, I will check my time and I will let you know how long I was waiting to this um, all those edges was cleared okay I will be right back I let my canvas sit for about another 10 minutes and let's check now I'm gonna go and look water not as dirty now as first time because there's not much left but if I look in here on the bottom I don't think I see any leftover of the paint we're just gonna check all the way around make sure nothing is left and then I will rinse it under the sink like right under the running water and I'm not going to show you that process because I don't have a fancy kitchen, first of all. And second of all, there's nothing really to show you. You just grab and rinse it. I'm not going to rub it. I'm just going to hold it under water, flip from side to side to make a canvas uh, soap free and excess of the dirty water. I just want to see that part that was um, mostly heavy printing. Like I don't see anything visible anymore on this side and I just want to check the side that was like those back stitch and cross stitching because up there was a heavy red writing I think it's all gone can you see on a camera maybe better let me just rinse the soap away no it's it's gone it's gone it's very clean now canvas in here so wonderful I like that so now I'm gonna rinse this to get all the soapy water out and I will be back to show you what we're gonna do next all right I rinse my canvas now I like even more when it's all the blue stuff's gone 
So what I'm gonna do, I'm still, it's a dripping water from, I'm just gonna kind of like a fold it in a roll like this. And I'm just gonna get like a little bit squish, just squish, don't not to twist it, to get some water drain to the bottom of my bowl. So we have a less that's it. Now what I have in here, it's a white towel. I fold it in half and uh, better of course if you use white towel, not uh, any colorful, just for in case you don't want to have your colors from the towel now transfer into your white canvas. Okay, let's see. Okay, this is stitching poking from behind. I thought I don't have um, paint come out. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of like a stretch on my towel so it's not disturbed and it's perfectly shaped canvas. Okay, I did this, now it looks like straight. What I'm going to do now, I'm gonna roll this canvas together with towel just like this we are gonna roll 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 okay let me turn this to myself so it's comfortable all I have to do it's gonna move a little bit this towel roll we need to get excess water out and I'm using old towel then once upon a time was pure white, now it's dirty white. <laughs> I don't want to use my brand new towel just for in case threads will soak into the white towel and color my fibers on a towel. So something old but still white will do. And now I'm just kind of like rolling and squishing to get as much as possible water out of my canvas. We just roll it. So the fiber from towel will suck out water. Okay. Let's see what we have. Now this side of the towel is... Where is it? No, I don't think so. Okay. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to flip towel on another side because this side now wet and I'm going to do the same thing kind of quickly not to ruin my table because wet will be making the spots on the wood. Okay, I will do the same thing to get as much as possible. Alright, now I'm gonna go and grab, uh, I thought I will be okay with one towel, but I'm gonna bring another towel, clean one, and spread my cross, -touch, cross stitching on it. Just a sec, I'm just gonna go and grab a towel. Alright, I'm back. I'm just gonna get one other towel. This one is gonna be wet, and I'm gonna stretch this one again make sure your hands clean so you don't get dirty spots on the canvas so kind of pull a little bit to make sure it's shaped it doesn't have to be like perfectly right now well that's okay to make as much as possible straight so you don't have too many wrinkles but because I'm still gonna work on it I'm still gonna do back stitching so for me it doesn't have to be like if you want on this point you can iron this and you will be ready to frame uh, just to make sure it's like almost done and if you decide to iron 
make sure you flip your canvas upside down and iron from the back. You don't want to burn your threads or if your iron have a little bit um, black back um, back in not as clean it will transfer transport into your canvas so always always wherever you iron iron from the back even if you're not certain of yourself grab something thin sheet of fabric uh, white or thin towel and uh, and iron through the towel not straight on the canvas if you're afraid to burn it uh, but yeah here is my back in doesn't look scary. Let me zoom close to the canvas. I don't have too many webs and looks not bad. In here I started. So my question is when I will do my back stitching, initially I wanted to stitch as well white parts. What do you think? Do I need to stitch? Like, it, you don't have to buy the book of the pattern. You don't have to stitch anything that is white in here. But do you think I should do like a half stitch with the white? Please let me know. So that way you're not going to see those holes from the canvas as we have. Like, you know, those holes will be disappear if I would stitch at least a half stitch. I don't know. Um, I really want you to give me your opinion what you think about it so now I'm gonna leave this canvas like this to dry I'm really happy about washing this canvas you can tell now it looks so much more beautiful when all those white li um, blue lines gone all this writing around it's absolutely pure white no residue left whatsoever so I have to say I do recommend this company to buy from because they proved me good lots of threads left now I will be fighting with back stitching I will back to you when this canvas dry and we will see the final result when it's dry now I'm gonna leave as this on the table till it's fully dry uh, it's not gonna be soaked on the bottom my table not gonna be ruined because towel is um, really really thick and fold it in half and canvas is just like a feeling damp but not wet anymore um, so yeah when you roll canvas with the towel and kind of squish and roll it most of the water will be go into your towels that's it guys for now oopsie sorry girls <laughs> I will get back to you when this canvas fully dry it's dry now and surprisingly it's still stiff fabric I thought when I will wash the fabric will be either will be soft but no it's still stiff which is really surprised me here was the most uh, heaviest print was on this side it's gone absolutely everything make me really really happy so now it's left only the back stitching but what I want to point it out first if you doing back stitching canvases for example area in here the sky that you're not supposed to stitch after wash I'm gonna zoom a little bit more close you can see the fabric a little bit wiggle it's not as tight as was before wash so if I would do back stitching in here and I need to do back stitching in here the threads would be hanging because the fabric settle a little bit and that's why I have kind of like a wiggles you see that uh, also I did not iron this canvas yet but I'm not sure if I would be iron if um, this um, would be better or not in the back stitching but I was afraid and I think it would be back stitching hain if I stitch them first before wash so now when it's washed um, I'm not really in a hurry to do back stitching but I will do it slowly I just wanted to show you the all uh, you know printed area is gone okay this I'm gonna try to turn off like feels like it's giving me yellow spots from that light but it's very pure white looks fantastic 
And there is a two back stitching techniques that in my mind I will do on this one. And I will show you both in two separate videos because uh, I was requested to show how I do back stitching. So I will do two video on it and then I just will finish this canvas and forget about it. So I will start. I, I took pictures already before shots, like for example, where is the most going to be back stitch? And I took here part, picture here, um, here and here, and then we will compare later, like shot by shot next to each other and have the look like without back stitching and with back stitching. But for now, I'm going to show you also my back end, how, how I do my back end. And let me pull out. Okay, I'm going to flip now the other side. So you can see how my back end look like. Not as horrible. I think it's not bad. I don't have any like a fluffy, fluffy back end. I try to do my back end under the, like under the stitches. Okay, so I will see you in my next video when I'm gonna start to do my back stitching.